What if Yellowstone doesn't need to erupt to become a national disaster? What if a subtle shift in the wrong place sets off a domino effect of earthquakes, hitting places all the way to Salt Lake City and beyond? You've probably heard of the Yellowstone supervolcano, and you've probably seen the headlines, the scare pieces, the YouTube videos with screaming thumbnails about doomsday level eruptions, wiping out half the country. But that's not what this episode is about. There's no lava, no eruption. Because what's more likely, and way more dangerous, is something quieter. Something that's already happening, right now, beneath your feet. Most people think Yellowstone is just a big volcano sitting in a park. But what they don't tell you is that it's connected, deep under the surface, to a sprawling system of fault lines that stretch from western Montana all the way down through Utah, and possibly beyond. It's called the Intermountain Seismic Belt, and if Yellowstone shifts, even just a little, it could trigger a chain reaction that sets off earthquakes across four states, affecting millions of people. We're talking about Salt Lake City, Boise, Missoula, Reno, entire metro areas. And here's the kicker. The experts, they don't know exactly how it works. They'll tell you that right up front. We're still learning how Yellowstone's underground stress interacts with nearby fault zones. Those aren't my words, that's from a 2022 USGS bulletin, buried in the footnotes. Now here's what they do know. Yellowstone isn't sitting still. Yellowstone moves. It breathes. The entire region swells and drops, sometimes by several inches in a year. That's from underground magma shifting, pressurized gas, and hydrothermal venting. You can go look it up. The Yellowstone caldera has lifted more than seven inches in some spots over the last couple decades. And when the pressure builds, the crust just doesn't absorb it. It cracks. That's where the faults come in. Yellowstone is threaded with immature, chaotic fault lines. Unlike the San Andreas, which is long and clean. These faults are short, irregular, and unpredictable. They don't behave the way textbooks say they should. In 2021, Yellowstone logged over 2,700 earthquakes, and about 65% of them came in swarms. No aftershocks, not random. Swarms. Groups of dozens or hundreds of quakes clustered in the same area, sometimes over just a few days. And those aren't just happening in the park. Some of those clusters are showing up along the edge of the Intermountain Seismic Belt hundreds of miles from the caldera itself. That means whatever pressure is building under Yellowstone, it's spreading. You want to hear the part that gives me the chills? In July of 2021, there was a minor swarm near Hebgen Lake, just west of the park boundary. Small quakes, nothing over a four, but about 36 hours later, there were recorded tremors in southern Idaho along a previously quiet segment of the fault line that hadn't moved in over a decade. Now, nobody at the USGS came out and said it was a chain reaction, but if you followed the data, it lines up. Let me tell you about a place called the Wasatch Fault Zone. You've probably never heard of it unless you live in Utah. It runs right through Salt Lake City. It's active and it hasn't ruptured in a very long time which geologists will tell you is not a good thing. That fault is overdue, and if you ask experts what could trigger it, they'll say, any significant change in stress across the regional system. That's the same system that Yellowstone is pressing against. In other words, you don't need an eruption. You just need one wrong push, one big underground shift, and the Wasatch could go. And if that goes, others could follow. You ever seen what a domino looks like when you hit the first one? Now imagine it's made of bedrock. Now, I'm going to tell you something that's going to sound made up, but it's not. In 2023, a team of researchers at Caltech used a new machine learning system to go back and analyze Yellowstone seismic data from the last 15 years. Not new quakes, old ones, stuff that has already happened. And what they found they didn't miss a few earthquakes. They missed tens of thousands. Over 86,000 earthquakes between 2008 
in 2022 went completely undetected. Now just let that sit for a second, 86,000. And we're not talking about tiny, harmless noise. These were real fault movements, some of them forming patterns tracing across sections of crust scientists thought were inactive. So what does that mean? It means that we don't know jack about what's really going on underneath Yellowstone. So how do you miss that many quakes? They weren't picked up because the traditional detection systems are only looking for certain signals. Quakes that last a certain time, or move a certain way, or fit a certain profile. But the new machine learning model caught bursts of microquakes, short, chaotic tremors clustered together, like something was trying to break free but hadn't. They looked like pressure testing the crust, and they were showing up in grids, cross patterns almost like tectonic equivalent of spider cracks in glass. In the crazy part, they just weren't near the caldera. Some of the most active patterns were found outside the traditional danger zone in areas that are supposedly safe, including near Hebgen Lake, West Yellowstone, Island Park, Idaho, and one deep under the Gallatin Rain, right under where millions of people drive and hike every summer. Nobody knows why. Nobody's mapped this pattern before. Nobody's talking about it now. But here is what makes it worse. You remember that big quake in Hebgen Lake back in 1959? It was a 7.3 and it killed 28 people, triggering a landslide, damming a river, and it reshaped the land. That quake was caused by one of the same fault zones that showed up in this 86,000 quake microgrid. So yeah, it's still active. It's still moving, and according to this new data, it's more active than we ever thought before. So some geologists now believe Yellowstone isn't just sitting on top of one volcano or one fault line. It's sitting on top of a cluster of fractured crust, weak zones, and shallow breaks that don't behave normally. They're calling it a seismic mishmash, a tangled, broken mess, and it's getting worse. What happens if it breaks? If just one of those clusters connects with the wrong fault line, like the Teton Fault or the Wasat, it could cause a chain shift, not an explosion, but a series of ruptures that send shockwaves across the entire western U.S. Quakes in Yellowstone, then Salt Lake, then Boise, maybe even Reno. One triggers the next over hours or maybe days all because of movement that started quietly, deep under the park, the kind that no one was even watching. Let's say this grid beneath Yellowstone really does shift. Not an eruption, not a mushroom cloud of ash, just movement in the wrong place, at the wrong time. Here's what that looks like. The first shake somewhere west of the park, maybe near Hebgen Lake, maybe Island Park. A magnitude 6.5 or 7 quake rips through the shallow fault, Landslides, roads gone, campsites buried, power flickers across the region. Most people think that's it, one and done, but it's not. Because 45 minutes later, another quake hits further south along the Wasatch Fall, Salt Lake City. In this one, it's bad. You've got over a million people in the valley, buildings not made for shaking, a downtown built on ancient lake bed sediment. It amplifies the shock, like setting off a bass drum under concrete. Freeways collapse, gas lines rupture, water systems offline, and cell towers are jammed. In emergency crews, they're trying to figure out if this is an isolated event or if something bigger is happening. More quakes show up. Boise, eastern Nevada, maybe even parts of northern California feel it. None of them are massive, but enough to cause widespread disruption. Trains stop, flights are grounded, supply chains are choked out, and here's the part that matters. Nobody knows how far it goes, because all of this is tied to the same interconnected fault system, that same seismic mismatch researchers discovered under Yellowstone. And since most of the faults aren't even fully mapped, there's no model for what's next. The system was never built for this. Here's something most people don't know. The U.S. Early Warning System for Earthquakes, it's mostly built around the West Coast, California, 
Oregon, Washington, places that expect it. But Yellowstone, Utah, and Idaho, you get seconds, if anything. That's not enough time to get outside, not enough time to evacuate, not enough time to stop trains, ground planes, or even close a dam. And since this isn't one single big one, it doesn't even look like it's a disaster until it already is. A thousand small cracks, each one opening the next until something that started quietly in the woods affects millions of people across the country. And then it just stops. Eventually, the system settles, not because we fixed anything, but because the energy was spent. What's left is damage, confusion, displacement, and a whole lot of people asking why nobody saw it coming. The experts will call it a rare event, a low probability sequence. But if you watch the patterns, if you followed the data, you'll know it wasn't rare and it wasn't random. It was building all along. They always tell us to watch the volcano, but maybe we've been watching the wrong thing. Maybe the real threat is the grid beneath it, 